Chile, the Atacama Desert, one of the most remote corners of our planet. Dry, lifeless, unforgiving. It's crunch time for our title contenders under desert skies. RXR lead the charge. Those chasing must respond. They must outperform, outrace, outscore. History will play its part. Pressure will be heavy, but they all have the same challenge. They must all beat the trap to beat each other. The title fight is now. Hello and welcome to round four of Extreme E 2022, the series that sees all electric SUVs compete in some of the most inhospitable locations on the planet in a bid to highlight the climate, climate crisis, but also to give 20 of the world's toughest racers a real chance to shine on a multitude of surfaces. Now, this weekend, we're in Chile for the Anto Fagasta Copper X Prix. The first time the championship has come here to South America, and we could see the title taken by Rosberg X Racing, who are looking to become two times champions this weekend. But the course is short, and there are plenty of teams who will be out there trying to do all they can to stop them. So just in case this is your first time watching Extreme E, I won't criticize you, but come along and see what it's all about. Extreme E is a fully electric off-road championship racing on the most challenging terrains across the globe. Ten world-class teams, each fielding one male and one female driver in gender equal lineups. In each session, both drivers will compete behind the wheel of the Odyssey 21 electric SUV with a driver changeover, the switch, halfway through. Each driver gets an Innoa hyperdrive boost in every session, giving them an increase in power to provide thrilling overtakes. There are also bonus points available for the fastest team through the Continental Traction Challenge section of the course over the weekend. Day one is qualifying with a round of time trials followed by a round of head-to-head -head races. This decides how teams line up for day two's racing. Day two sees high-speed knockout racing with the goal of reaching the final. First up are the two semi-finals, where the top two teams progress from each. Then it's the last chance to progress in the winner-takes-all crazy race. Fans can vote for their favourite driver in grid play, with the winning team able to select their grid spot for the final first. The five-car main event sees the team battle it out for the crown's X3 winner and bag 25 championship points. The team with the most points after five races will be crowned Extreme E champions. So that tells you what it's all about. We've already had practice. We've seen plenty of running and it looks like a really lovely track. I think it's going to be, it, it, it was spectacular with one car on it at a time. I think it's going to be fantastic when we go racing in a minute. Um, it's short, it's sharp, there's plenty of jumps on it. I think there are opportunities to overtake using the Anoa Hyperdrive. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. So, let's give you a recap then of qualifying one. So it was uh, Neon McLaren Extreme E, who were off the line first of all, Emma Gilmore taking the wheel. She had a puncture yesterday in her free practice session and missed a lap. But Emma's split times were good yesterday. She messaged me uh, and said about what she thought about the course. She liked it. She wasn't sure there's going to be that many opportunities to overtake. Oh, really? Yeah, That's just interesting. Because of how close the lap times are. And we, we did see that, didn't we, throughout Q1. It is, it is tight at the top, to be fair. 
Yeah, it certainly is. And you can just see here the pairing of Gilmore and Faust, handing over to Faust. A little bit down on run time, but actually, when he got in the car, they looked really stable and a, a, as a um, duo. The two of them really showing good pace and coming together well. Yeah, Tanner flying uh, both in terms of the timesheets and in terms of that massive jump over the start finish on that one is absolutely flat out. Uh, Tamara Molinaro in for Excite Energy Racing along with Timo Scheider. They were, of course, the championship drivers. They're now, I guess, full timers. I think they're going to be in that car until the end of this season, certainly into the switch for tomorrow. She was a couple of seconds off the pace of the McLaren, but really only, only a couple of seconds. It was very, very tight between these first two cars. Two of them have found a really close bond, which is great, and you can just see them communicating well, sharing ideas, sharing knowledge to go out there and try and set the best possible time. They'd love a repeat of last time out. They got a podium. Can they do it again? Will they get a, another tattoo? They got tattoos because they got podiums. Will they get more tattoos with more podiums? Well, it remains to be seen. Um, RXR off the line, the championship leaders. Of course, the winners of all three races but for being DQ'd from race number two after that contact with that Giona Sainz in uh, turn one in Sardinia at the merge. Arlen Kotlinski came out and just bossed it straight away. Look at the time bottom right of your screen five seconds up at this point by the time she came into the switch it was 7.72 so she was the benchmark for the female drivers and then Christopherson took over. Yeah a little bit of chat between them before Christopherson went out you can see the wide line that he took and he really wrung the neck of his Odyssey 21 going wide again there taking a different line, hyperdrive up that hill, over the crest to just try and gain as much momentum as they possibly can. They were using hyperdrive there, of course, because they're all desperate to get those five extra points for the Continental Traction Challenge. And we saw most of the teams using it on the run up the hill, but one team who didn't use it at all, or certainly one driver, Katie Munnings, because she had her hands very full indeed. Yeah, the car not running well at all. It looked very slow and bogged down, and it turned out that she had a steering problem. She was able to communicate that to Timmy Hansen when they came in. They did a reset, and out he went, and it seemed to behave a little bit better at first, but then unfortunately fell away again. Well, it behaved a little bit too well, didn't it, because Timmy did 76 kilometres an hour in the uh, switch zone, and the speed limit, Jenny, is 30. 30. Yes, so that was an immediate 46-second penalty. A bit of a shame, really, because with the issues some of the other teams had, they might have got a result halfway up the table, but with that big speeding uh, fine, for want of a, a better phrase, they dropped right down the order. Uh, next up, Clara Anderson, our championship driver, taking over from Utah. To Kleinschmitz, who unfortunately was injured in an accident yesterday. So she's recovering in hospital at the moment. Clara gets her chance to shine, and shine she did alongside Nasser Alatia. Um, the car was rebuilt, they broke curfew, but it looked pretty impressive when they're out there. Bearing in mind this is Anderson's first real go at the car. Yeah, it is indeed. She races in uh, Electric Rallycross in the World Rallycross Championship. We got a podium there in Portugal last weekend. So coming here confident and joining up, of course, with NASA Alatia, the Dakar legend, who is himself looking to be a little bit further up the championship standings. I think you're on board with him there. Uh, I, I think they could be a great pairing, but Clara hasn't had any seat time since the rookie test last year. Yeah, big ask. And these guys will be hoping for a repetition of last time out when they won. It is the Chip Ganassi racing team. Sarah Price going in first and then Kyle the Duke and the pair of them very at home in these surrounds. Yeah, this track is is pretty USA spec in terms of just the jumps and the whoops and crests and things. It would very much suit the Duke if this were a round of the Pro 4 Championship. Certainly, he is uh, he's used to sending trucks. Here you go, watch this on board. Thank you very much. Airtime. Yeah, lots of use of the word dialed. So I think they're up for it this weekend. Yeah, they spent a lot of time actually in the car, going over things, studying things, and you can just see a little bit of a fist pump. The Duke happy enough with that. They were right up there, weren't they? P2 at this point. Out went Kevin Hansen. Listen to this. He maybe can't hear it. There was. There it is really loud clattering noise unfortunately broke the front right drive shaft so that then means three wheel drive all the power going to one wheel at the front the car understeers on turning it doesn't have good traction going up the hills and poor head of Hossas had to deal with that for her whole two lap run yeah and Hansen made a decision he didn't want to damage the car anymore so he went wide at the finishing line missing this jump which led to him getting a five second penalty from the stewards he did what he thought was right at the time and maybe it still was the right thing yeah he was looking after the car wasn't he and they reset it before header went out they turned down the power on the front so yeah, they had they had a plan unfortunately the stewards still said you've got to go around the track I'm afraid unlucky uh, Christine Gutierrez out with Sebastian Lowe for x44 and sideways coming down the hill 
little moment for her there. We did wonder if she hadn't done that, if potentially they could have gone top of the standings for the Continental Traction Challenge, but uh, it wasn't to be. Sebastian Loeb, the fastest male driver out there. Yeah, setting a couple of blistering sectors out there. It wasn't to be for him to get the Traction Challenge sector, actually, but when they came all together with those combined scores, because you can see that went to Rosberg X Racing, but plenty of time still for them to challenge that across the course of the weekend. And last up, uh, not last up, penultimately, sorry, it was Veloce, Christine GZ, getting back behind the wheel again she's back to full fitness we think after that horrible crash uh, in the first round she took part in the last two races in sardinia seemed like they came a bit early and now she's going to have to rebuild a bit of confidence in that car yeah absolutely it was a big crash in saudi arabia wasn't it and when you have a long recovery period like that it, it knocks your confidence so we know christine gz is quick she was very quick in saudi just before the shunt and she's just got to find that headspace again lance walrish doing his best to keep up with the lap times on the second lap but the deficit just a bit too much to close yeah, you can see, though, out there he's got bags of experience and he'll be hoping to deploy that when we get into qualifying round two and then the races tomorrow as well. So still plenty of room for them to work their way up. Only seven points. Last car out on track in Q1, Axiona Sainz. Now, Lia Sands and Carlos Sainz were fastest in both free practice sessions yesterday. So speed and consistency, that is the golden ticket. And Lia Sands went on today to do an absolutely outstanding run. She came in, I think, 2.7 seconds off the benchmark pace. There it is, down at the bottom of your screen, and it all went wrong here, Jenny. It did, just watch. So they do the door up, and just as the door's brilliant, done, brilliant he looks to go. Unfortunately for him, though, he's not allowed to take that car into drive before their mechanic is out of that pen so they automatically got a 15 second penalty on top of the bot switch which meant that they were way back in the standings from where they could have potentially been so frustration for the axiona science team i think they'll try and respond in this next session but this was how they finished q1 so arlen kodlinski and christophson at the top of the table here also of course for the continental traction challenge and then these teams will split into odds and evens to go into their two heat races for Q2, five cars in each, and they'll get more of those qualification points down the side of your screen there, right-hand side. They don't count towards the championship, they just count towards where you qualify tomorrow. So the top six will go into the two semi-finals, the bottom four into the crazy race. Yeah, and that should give us some really nice action looking forward because everybody out there Looks absolutely nailed on to have a brilliant session. Well, Extremis race locations are chosen not just because they're extreme, but also for their place in the climate conversation. Chile is the world's number one producer of copper, which is a vital mineral for our everyday lives. The Copper X Pre aims to showcase the solutions that are blazing a trail and transforming the industry for the better. So let's tell you a little bit more about the message from this weekend and what we can all go away and learn about. So we are now in the Atacama Desert at about 2,000 meters above sea level. This is the driest place on earth with the least amount of life in the whole planet, but yet, it is the hotspot of mineral resources and metals in the world. Minerals like uh, copper are essential fabrics of the Green Revolution. And we forecast that by uh, 2050, the demands to electrify the world will imply that the demand for copper will increase 250%. So one main driver of the increase in demands for copper with the electrification of the world is electrical vehicles. Sales of EV vehicles globally reached 6.75 million vehicles in 2021. This is more than double the amount of sales in 2020. So in order to sustainably meet our goals in terms of energy sources, we need not only uh, to be able to source the materials and recycle them, but we need to mine copper sustainably. Prior to the weekend's racing, Rosberg X Racing drivers Michaela Arlen Kotlinski and Johan Christofferson took time out to visit a nearby mine and learn about the innovations in practice at the Antofagasta Minerals site as part of a push to increase sustainability in the industry. So when we producing EV cars, the copper is used, which means that we have to find a way, and they are working very hard on that, to, to find a way to produce copper in the most sustainable way we can. At the moment they are driving on fuel, but they are looking into ways of driving hydrogen fuel. It's all about, you know, um, developing new technology and that's 
the way we see it in Extreme E2. And what we also learned today is that they are using seawater instead of fresh water. That is something that is really new when it comes to mining. So that was really interesting to learn that today. So the challenge is not just to meet the increase in demand. The challenge is to what to do with these materials at the end of life. And currently we are only able to recycle 53% of the copper embedded in consumer goods and electronics. So the recycling mandate that we need to meet requires engagements at all levels from individuals to industries to governments. So we do not make mining and use of metals a problem on the environment and a problem on human and social health. Absolutely fascinating learning a bit more about why we are here in Chile. And we're also here to race and just look what the points so far have done for us. Two great qualifying rounds and just look at the talent on show. Yeah, no easy race, Jenny. Odds no. go to race one, evens to race two. Sometimes you, know, you look at one of them and you think, OK, that's the one I fancy being in. But people had their issues during Q1. If they all have a clean run in Q2, both those races, I think, are going to be really tough. Obviously, it is RXR going for the championship. They'll want to collect as many points as possible. And can we see any more of those traction challenge sector set. We've got the first of our five car races coming up. I, for one, can't wait. These guys are trying to stay relaxed, and I'm here to hype them up. It is, of course, number 99, Hummer EV Chip Ganassi Racing, Carla Duk and Sarah Price. Carl, I'm here bringing the hype. You're dialed in, but just at the moment, trying to stay chilled. Yeah, just trying to think about what we can do to gain a little bit of time and uh, stick five cars on these tracks here in about two seconds. So. Uh, it's going to be interesting. We just got to uh, play it by ear and, and get up next to Johan and some of these other drivers and try to be smart, not throw it away, but also uh, fight for a win. Yeah, it's risk versus reward, isn't it? That balance of keeping it on track, but being very fast as well. How are you going to unlock a bit more time on this course? Uh, you know, I think it's just uh, analyzing the data right now. That's what we've been doing, just watching videos and looking at times. But uh, we're in a pretty good position, and I think the spots that we can improve are very... Uh, you know, small uh, inputs everywhere around the track. So I think we're in a good spot, but now we're going door-to-door -door racing, so the times don't really matter. It's gonna be uh, now racing, so. Oh, that's what I love. <laughs> uh, you're locked in this battle for P2 in the standings, and certainly you, amongst a number of other teams as well, can stop RXR winning here as well. How much is that playing into your thought process, or is it a case of following your own process? Yeah, I mean, we don't want anyone else to win here besides ourselves. So if it's if it's Johan, Sainz, or any of these other teams, um, our job is to try to take them down. So we need to get there first. We need to get to the final. And, uh, you know, hopefully we do our homework here and, and try to win some races. Um, you know, we've been fortunate in the past to, to be fast and, and, and get our last win. But we, uh, we want to go door to door and try to win one outright for sure. For a man trying to stay chilled, that's some fighting talk, but I love it. Good luck to you guys. Thank you very much. And uh, we will head now just next door, actually, to XI Energy Racing. And it is this team who will be lining up alongside them in that first race. Um, a brilliant debut podium for this debut pairing in Sardinia last time out. And I'm going to force my way right round. Uh, through to the depths of the garage where I will find the two drivers, Timo and Tamara, who are locked in to analyzing some of the onboards. Guys, oh, they've shut the laptop. Look at that. Right, come on, give us some secrets. What were you seeing on there? Well, no problem, no problem. Well, it's anyway off now, so <laughs> the laptop saw the TV. <laughs> well, basically, you know, we all try to somehow uh, adapt uh, even more to the track, to the conditions, to the car. And there's always something you can do any better. So um, I think uh, we are trying to, to match our labs. We overlay the labs and we try to learn from each other as well. That's the, that's the target we are going for. Tamara, door to door racing here on this course. What are you going to make of it? What's going to happen? <laughs> What's going to happen? Uh, I wish I had the magic ball, but sadly I don't have it at home. Uh, well, we, for sure we will try our best. Uh, I'm really confident that Timo will have a good start. Right? Yeah. So, <laughs> and uh, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we will have uh, a good spot for tomorrow. Oh, we shall see. I'm excited to see you guys out there. Door to door, it's coming up very soon. Thank you both very much. Look Thank forward you. to seeing you out there. So championship standings after round three, you had that double header in Sardinia. And we know that RXR have got a massive lead at the top of the standings. It's 32 points between them and the next challengers, Chip Ganassi racing in P2. P3 is actually on a science and it's X44 are actually only one point further back from them. So we've got some brilliant drivers in this series. 
Let's meet one of them, Sebastian Loeb. I'm uh, Sebastian Loeb, and I'm driving uh, in X3 Mini for X44. When I was young, I was doing gymnastics until 14 years old. It was uh, my first passion, and when I was 18, I had my driving license. The engine, the speed that was attracting me, and immediately it was, I don't know why, but it was my passion to just to, to find the best way to, to take this corner. I had so many incredible moments in my career. For me, it's two highlights that I remain in mind. It's uh, my first title in Corsica, uh, because that was the first title. And uh, the other best moment of my career, I think, is I won the rally in, in France, which was uh, this year in the Alsace. The finish line was in my hometown, where I'm born, and where I have all my friends and, and family. And so that was just a, an amazing feeling. But then, when I was 39 years old, uh, nine-time world champion, I was thinking maybe it's time to, to stop rallying and, and do something else. So I decided to go racing in GT. Then we convinced Citroën to come in the Touring Car Championship. Then I went to Dakar with Peugeot and Rallycross also. And I think I was lucky because of my career. I enjoyed it. If I decided to get involved in uh, Extreme e, because it was something completely new with a lot of attractive points like the location where we are driving going to Greenland that was the first time of my life some incredible places also the principle of the race is quite uh, original to share the car with a, a girl was something new for me and I think it's a nice experience to, to work together and also the fact that we are driving with a new kind of cars full electric cars with the goal of to let a, a positive impact on the place where we came. Yeah, I think the, the idea is really, really cool and uh, I think it's nice for the future. I'm driving at the moment because I like it and I think the day where I will not enjoy it as much or where I will feel that I, I'm getting too slow or too old or anything, uh, maybe this time I will stop. Not every people have the chance to, to live from their passion, so uh, I feel really lucky about it. So here is the course that the drivers are going to have to handle, and it's short and sweet, so they're going to have to do two laps each around it. Yeah, it's going to be very different, isn't it, when you look at the slingshot, the ridge line. We know these sections are very technical and twisty right through the summit of the Traction Challenge, even the run down the hill on the Traction Challenge towards the jump. Then that back part of the circuit down over the finish line, remember they're doing two laps before they go in the switch, is much faster. So I think there will be places to pass, but this is the first time we've seen all cars on track together. Jenny, you know, all to play for. Yeah, even this finish line, as you say, is very tricky with that bank step where they have to go over, get a bit of air, and then through, up through the ruts as well. Some of this cutting up now, the slingshot, beautiful section of the track. I really like the banking that they have to go through. So many challenges out there. Yeah, it's a big wide straight on the run up to the summit there as well. I'm wondering whether, you know, off the top of that crest, the, the ridge line, we might see people using hyperdrive to pass. And then how, how brave do you want to be over that jump, oh, Jenny? You know? so brave. Yeah. Foolishly brave, if up to me but let's not try and do that right laura winter is down there for us in the paddock and finding out all the latest information for us it's time for some wheel to wheel action and we have q2 race one fast approaching and one of the main men in that one is johan christopherson rxr of course fastest in q1 this morning you didn't get the fastest lap though you were pipped just by sebastian Loeb, and i'm your face is saying you're not too happy about that how are you getting back uh, yeah, I'll try my best, but yeah, it was very little in it, and, uh, but he, he got also the quickest super sector, so I have to improve a little bit there, but Michele did a great job in that one, so, uh, but McLaren is just behind, so it's a, it's a tough fight out there. It is a tough fight. Grid slot three, you've just told me, you've got your plans. Do you care to share any of them with us? Well, I, I think it's uh, quite straightforward that, you know, um, uh, let's see, five and four has a very good initial launch, I think, good start grip. But obviously that's the outside. Um, two looks a bit rough, uh, but also one is not too bad. Uh, so Kyle chose that one. So, you know, let's see who made the best predictions. You've been flying in the world of rallycross so far this season. You enjoyed um, a little bit of contact with Timmy Hansen last time out as well. We do have door-to-door -door racing now on this course. What are you expecting? 
Uh, yeah, let's see. I think, you know, Q2 is always Q2, it's not a final, so I think everyone's going to stay quite steady. Um, but, you know, let's see. I think we have to finish top two or something to get a first choice in one of the semifinals. And I think we mainly just have to finish without penalties to avoid crazy race. So, steady approach. All to play for. Thank you very much, Johan. Best of luck. Um, OK, we'll head up now. I mentioned there, of course, Timmy Hansen, uh, who is a friendly rival of Johan Christofferson in multiple racing disciplines. We're about to talk, though, to his teammate, Katie Munnings, of Genesis Andretti United. They had a really unfortunate Q1 this morning with power steering issues and then a speeding penalty as well. I'll head now into the garage to find Katie somewhere. Ah, here we are. Here I am. Um, we're going to speak to Katie. We speak spoke to her in the switch just afterwards about we're well, just coming this way here is Katie now camera's hopefully with me Katie I was just saying we spoke to you in the switch and it was so frustrating to see that the car had the pace but the power steering just meant you couldn't put it down yeah I mean this is motorsport isn't it um you're all revved up to go and then sometimes it that, that happens but um we're lucky it happened in quality to be fair it's not in one of the semis or the final where it matters so Still everything to play for. Um, as you say, like we, we still had quite good pace considering, so I think that's given me and Timmy a bit of confidence. Uh, we know we've got a really good car and, and the team have been working hard on that, so we'll go out all guns blazing for the second heat. The unfortunate speeding penalty for Timmy as well um, in the switch zone means that you are some time back, but that means all to play for, and it's, it's now five-car racing, which means anything can happen. We know that in Extreme E. Yeah, unfortunately, like part of the reset that we did took off the pit limiter. So Timmy was on, I think, 70 kilometers an hour or something in the pit lane, which is a little bit too fast. So, um, yeah, we got a time penalty for that. But to be honest, I don't think that made too much difference. Maybe we could have been up one or two places. But I think in the overall, it, it wasn't a huge thing. The, the pace was lost on track. So that's a shame. But um, yeah, as we say, bad dress rehearsal, good show. Oh, I love that. <laughs> uh, what is the goal? What's the overall aim for this weekend as well with so much to pay for in the standings? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, we've had a, we know we could be further up the standings than where we are. We've had a, a bit of unluck, unluckiness this year. You know, we've been taken out in the semi-final. We've had a, a couple of mechanicals. So I think, you know, in terms of overall pace, we know we're, we're up there. We know we can get on the podium. So I think that's our ultimate game for this weekend. We'd love to get a win this year, of course. Um, we haven't had one yet, so I think we're all hungry for that. Well, Sardinia showed that you certainly like to get your elbows out. So I can't wait to see you out there in action. And fingers crossed the car is all good for now. Thank you very much, Katie. OK, here we go. It's time for some wheel-to-wheel, door-to-door action. It's Q2 Race 1. Absolutely stunning landscape. Could be Tatooine, couldn't it? Moss Eisley Cantina, maybe? Oh, it's very Star Wars down there, isn't it? It really is. Lovely Star Wars <laughs> reflection. I'm half, half expecting uh, yeah, Luke Skywalker in the oh. uh, in the, in his speeder to turn up with Obi-Wan, R2-D2 and C-3PO. Have you bought your lightsaber? I haven't, actually. Shame. Obviously, I'm a Jedi, but I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but maybe, yeah, maybe only at motorsport stuff. I think it's that, that may be all the Star Wars references you're, you're ever going to hear on Extreme E, but yeah, I'm a big fan. Look, it's time to go racing here in Chile. This is the grid for the first one of our Q2 encounters. Uh, five cars wide. We heard why Johan's chosen that position. Has he, uh, has he got that right or not? We're going to find out. Yeah, fascinating. So much great fun to come. Let's go down into the Vodafone Business Command Center. We can speak to our team member. It is Christine GZ, who's down there smiling, hopefully. How are you doing? Are you all right? Ready, ready for this qualifying session, Christine? She can't hear us, unfortunately, at the moment. That's another Star Wars fail, I think, a little bit, but she's going to hear us any second now. She's smiling. Hopefully she can hear us. Christine GZ, can you hear us? Because we are hopefully hearing you. No, okay, unfortunately not there. to be. There was a gremlin in the works as well. How many other 80s movies can we get into this? I'm just trying to think of some sort of a reference. Yeah, these aren't the droids you're looking for. I suspect there was somebody, <laughs> somebody in the background. Anyway. Christopherson, middle of the grid. You heard what he said. The, the better traction is slot four and five, but he doesn't want to be outside. He reckoned one or three. Really interesting, actually. So Chick Ganassi got the second pick, and they did pick slot five. So he doesn't have a problem being out there. Slot one, I think they are, because turn one's a right-hander. So I, I think they're on the inside. I, I think they're on the inside, so...
3, 2, 1. One minute signal, one minute signal. So we are ready. It is the one minute command for our drivers to get ready. You can see their five partners in crime all there in the command center. But five drivers line up. The sun glinting off the windscreens at the moment down there on the start line for the Antofagasta Copper X Prix. So it's all the male drivers in for the start here. Only one team chose to go with different tactics. That was JBXE. Three, two, one, 15 seconds. So 15 seconds to go until the start of this race. It's Andretti United, Excite, RXR, Veloce and Chip Ganassi racing. Andretti United there on the left to the right. It is Chip Ganassi racing. Who's going to get the best start and how Gosh, aggressive will they be? And they are off. So you can see they're pretty bogged down at the start of it. Level pegging. It looks like Andretti United have got a good start. They creep away for them. Then Veloce seem to be coming up as well. How are five going to go into this turn? RXR have bailed on this. They're going back behind them. And it's Excite Energy who take the lead. They're around the first turn. They've got to bank it again. Veloce try and go up the inside. Then it's to the left. And you can see it's a real mess out in front. But it's Excite Energy followed by Veloce. Chip Ganassi racing. There's damage for RXR as well. They've picked up a bit of a hit there on the front left. That's just bodywork action but I think they've come together with Excite going through there. Yeah big problems for Johan Christofsson lost out didn't he dropped a long way back as we see the bodywork come off it might be the Chip Ganassi racing machine I think has lost the hood up on the top now coming down around the outside at least three cars have gone to the wrong flag so three cars have gone completely the wrong way it's at that waypoint off the top of the crest including RXR the last three cars have, have basically gone too deep, Jenny, whether they were d mistook it in the dust. They've all gone round the outside. They will all get a penalty for that. Massive advantage to Genesis Andretti United and Chip Ganassi Racing. Yeah, and you can just see that Chip Ganassi Racing are all over the back of that Andretti United car. They want through. So does Excite. A huge mistake from those three cars. They all kind of got blindsided and just went a little bit too deep. So Veloce have stopped, unfortunately, for them. So hopefully there'll be a yellow flag. It won't stop the race, fingers crossed. But it was constant between Chip Ganassi Racing and Veloce that's under investigation now Attention as Timmy Hansen leads. Waypoint 9 and 10, we have a slow zone. So we have a slow zone between 9 and 10. They'll have to reduce their speed when they get to that section of the track. Look at the front of the GMC Hummer. Not looking too tidy now, is it, with the Bank's back front either. and back ripped off. They come down to complete their first lap. This is the very fast left-hander at the end of the lap. Timmy Hansen leading Kyle LeDuc. All three cars behind. Hoping for a better position, but even so, Jenny, they're all going to get a penalty for missing that waypoint. So for me, this this is a race between these front two. Yeah, Chip Ganassi and Andretti United, the only ones that managed to get through that waypoint correctly. You can see there's no points for beauty here. Chip Ganassi looks ugly as anything in that Hummer EV. We haven't seen the hyperdrive yet, I don't think, either. But they will have to go through the yellow zone and slow down for that. So that's worth bearing in mind. But just look. They're all over the back of Hansen. LeDuc wants this. Yeah, LeDuc's looking very quick indeed, isn't he? But it is proving harder to pass than I thought it might. Now he dives up the inside line, going to try and go late on the brakes into the left hand. He wasn't close enough. That's going to compromise his line over the crest a little bit. He runs wide up the inside. XI Energy Racing going to take the position. RXI might get there too. He carries enough speed up the crest side by side now. Is anybody going to use hyperdrive here and try and get the advantage? Absolutely door to door here between Scheider and Kyle LeDuc. LeDuc's going to be on the outside as they come up to the next left hander sideways coming down the crest but they've all gone in there did they come in too quick into the speed limit zone i think they might have just about got in there in time as soon as they hit that waypoint they had to slow down at waypoint nine so automatically they hit the pit limiter they slow down to a crawl and you can just see it's hansen then it's scheider then christopherson leduc they are racing again now so that wasn't great for Kyle LeDuc. It's dropped him right back. He came in, I think, super sideways on the brake. Ah, oh, the rear right's off Kyle LeDuc's car. I'm pretty sure there's an issue for the Chip Ganassi racing machine. Oh, it might be the bodywork hanging off. Need to see the rear right of Kyle LeDuc right at the back of the pack. Staying with them at the moment, though, and you can see now the fight is on to still claw back Andretti United. Had a horror show in qualifying one, but now they are out there and looking really good in front of the Excite Energy team, who will likely pick up a, um, a penalty of some form, and then RXR again, who look like they will be penalised. But look, Christopherson all over the back now of Scheider. He wants to get past. 
Christofferson in the slipstream. Oh, he's so close. Scheider goes on the brakes. They dive off to the right-hand side. Christofferson's going to try and now break him into the switch zone. Oh, they're almost into the back of Hansen. They've closed up so much. Christofferson jumped on the gas as he came back over the, fit, the start line, didn't they? Oh, they're actually driving into each other. That is one that will absolutely get investigated, Jenny, because that's contact in the switch zone. They're trying to play it cool, but there's, there's definitely a bit of beef there. Not happy. Wow. Meanwhile, the race leader, Katie Munnings, comes out to swap over with Timmy Hansen. In the background, in comes the Chip Ganassi racing machine, which I think is damaged, but we didn't quite see. There were so many bits hanging off. Oh, but yeah. yes, puncture, rear right puncture. Thought I'd seen something in the background, but I wasn't sure if it was just another piece of bodywork flailing. So they're going to have to change that now. They've got the tyre. They're ready to go. So they wheel it out. They're going to have to use the jack to pump it up, but there's a problem. I think Sarah went in too early. She was rolling the wheel in, Jenny, and I don't think the car had come to a standstill. So they might get a penalty too. I'm afraid wow. whatever happens in this one, you're, you're going to have to wait a while before you can uh, before you can say definitely what the result was. This is penalty a rama, isn't it? At the moment, it looks like Timmy Hansen, the only one that managed to keep it clean enough out there not to get a penalty. You see the grin on his face. Someone's just <laughs> said, mate, everybody else has messed They're it out. up. They're all going to get a penalty. Look at this. Three run wide. So it's Excite who lead them off. Veloce following. There's contact between them. And then Johan Christopherson went in behind them, which is really unusual. Kyle LeDuc followed Timmy Hansen on the inside line this was the side-by-side -side race between uh, Scheider and Leduc coming up now watch this is the braking zone oh, we're not going to see it that would have been the braking zone in this is going to be exit. interesting the out though RXR versus Excite Energy who's going to break first they go and it was a good restart there really good restarts for Arlen Kotolinski yeah, it was. So Katie Munnings leads by what is the gap? We need to wait until they get through the next waypoint. Oh, OK, we're going to go down and hear from her teammate. So Timmy Hansen is with Laura Winter. Oh, Timmy, what a start to that race. Talk me through it. Yeah, well, that was one of the craziest races I've ever done, I think. Yeah, I got completely shoved out from the outside in turn one. But, you know, we were all kind of keen to get out first. And I came out last, not according to plan. And then I overtook everyone in one corner, which is something I never thought I'd be doing. <laughs> it was crazy. We'll let you go and we'll see how Gage gets on. Thank you, Bodan. There you go. Even Timmy Hansen didn't expect it. Overtook everyone in one corner. That's the lead that Katie Munnings has. You can see it visually on screen. It's 4.452 seconds, according to our timing screens. Michaela Arlen Kotlinski trying to close down. Now they come into that slow zone. Nice and early on the limit to that. Ah, did, did Arlen Kotlinski go on? I think she's struggling with her pit limiter. Okay. Do you see, Jenny, the yeah. nose of the car was rising up and down. Just to let you know, five second time penalties for car six, 42 and five. The three cars that missed that waypoint. Five seconds, it's not the end of the world, not game over. Those will be Excite Energy, RXR and Veloce. RXR, of course, leading the championship at the moment. Everyone trying to claw back those 32 points advantage and the bodywork flailing around on Arlen Kotlinski's front left. So they could get on the radio to Katie and say, look, don't you don't need to get stuck in because there's a five second penalty. You know, if Arlen Kotlinski wants to barge through, follow her. I don't think Katie would do that anyway. I think she'll want a racer. And to be fair, Arlen Kotlinski isn't closing the gap. It is still 4.3 seconds. So Katie Munnings has got one lap to go. And this would be a massive turnaround for Genesis Andretti United. The power steering didn't work for Katie, and she's been rapid in every session we've seen her in. Oh, that's the Hummer off at the side of the track. So Sarah Price has pulled the Hummer off to the side of the road. Looks what like they've shame. got more damage. That's two retirements then. So the Veloce Racing Machine and the GMC. And she's going again. She's going again. OK, well, we'll keep an eye on them at the front, though. Let's watch Andretti United come round. Munning's doing a good job. And then behind, Arlen Kotlinski. That gap now seven seconds. The penalty will be five seconds that Arlen Kotlinski has to serve. I thought something, I think something might have happened in the background before the jump, Jenny. There was so much dust in the background. And then Arlen Kotlinski didn't appear when I thought she would. I thought the, the gap was four and a half. Ah. So ah, something has happened. So Excite Energy Racing steering is broken, but where are Rosberg X Racing? What happened in the background of that jump? You could see the dust, but she was outside the four second gap that I thought, looking in the background, she's nowhere to be, there she is. So they've lost a ton of time. Something happened before the jump. 
Wow, this is a dramatic qualifying. Remember, everyone goes through to the semi-finals tomorrow, but it's whether they get into the crazy race or they get themselves into one of the actual semi-finals to go through from each. I'm calling it, this is the crazy race. This is about I the know. craziest race we've ever seen in Extreme E. Isn't it just? I mean, we've seen some very good running so far. None of the cars seem to have had too many problems. All of the drivers saying they thought they could push it really hard, and now they're pushing it really hard, and it's gone wrong for them. So into this slow zone again, you can just see the stricken Veloce car off to the left. Really, really hard. There's something not quite right yeah, with she's that. On and off the throttle, Jenny. It's exactly the same as we saw on the previous lap. Just start, stop, start, stop. I'm hoping that Katie got the go slow right through there. She's so far out in front, and we were with RXR. So Katie Munnings can just cruise this pack. I can't believe the change in fortune. Well, she I'm said, didn't she? They yeah. said it was the rehearsal yeah. and this was the show. And you never you never want to get things right on the dress rehearsal. That's when it can all go wrong. And I tell you what, Chip Ganassi Racing are back racing. They've managed to get it going again. So at the moment, Andretti United followed by Rosberg X Racing, Excite Energy, and then Chip Ganassi Racing. So it's, uh, it's got Katie Munnings is taking it. She's coming down to the finish line now. Going to go over that big jump. Looks left and looks right. Great drive by her. That's it. This is the finish in sight for us. So Munning's coming down, going to fly the finish line now. Andretti United take the win. What a turnaround in Fortune for them. Who is in second? I have absolutely no idea. I think it will be RXR. It is. Michaela Arlen Kotlinski comes down for P2. And Sarah Price, I think, was almost a whole lap down, Jenny. We saw them in the background a moment ago. It's incredible that they've managed to get that car going. I think she's in sector one at the moment, but hard to tell. Well, a lot happened. <laughs> I don't know how, how we're going to fit that into a 30-second highlights. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, good luck to our um, editors. <laughs> I mean, wow. What there there is there's Sarah Price. So they are still circulating. The rear right, though, isn't turning around at the same... Watch the rear right wheel. And it's not turning around at the same speed. It's bizarre because there isn't any dirt flying up. Might be an optical illusion of the clean wheel. Yeah, maybe from the side there. You can see that... Uh, I think she's then gone through that waypoint yeah. without going slowly as well. So, unfortunately, there, there are going to be a lot of penalties in this. But what I can say is I'm pretty sure that none of them are going to be for Genesis Andretti United, Jenny, because we didn't see anything that they did wrong. And even if they got a penalty, let's say Katie sped through on the second lap, which I don't think she did, they would still win because they're 23 seconds up the road. I think RXR are going to get... Well, I don't know, I just wonder if they might get a bit of a telling off of what happened on the way into the switch zone. There was a lot of contact between Scheider and Christofferson. Half and half? Yes, I th yeah, I think so. You're driving... Don't, I don't see it was, there was one of forcing space. the other out. No, I there, feel like they both came together and they both pushed it a little bit. And it was, both yeah. in oh, the wrong? A little pointless, too, when it's wide enough to go side by side down there. You know, one of you... The only thing that would have helped... It, the, the only thing I can think is if RXR's switch bay was before Excite, then Johan would have needed to get to the right, in which case he would be saying, I need to come over there and shite is in the way. P3 is going to go to the number 99. GMC Hummer EV wow. of Chip Ganassi Racing. And that uh, is carnage. That race was carnage. You referenced Star Wars before this. This oh. looks one of the this looks like one of the bits that they're gonna sell for parts at the end of it. Yeah, it does, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. unbelievable. Yes, Jenny, good Thank you very much. It's not just the boys that like Star <laughs> exactly. Wars, you know. It isn't. You've got Millennium Falcon in your office, I've seen it. I know. Uh, Veloce racing, stricken car out there. Just doesn't go right for them at all at the moment, does it? Another str stricken car in the XI Energy team as well. My word, Laura Winter is going to have a work cut out trying to find people to interview because there are so many stories going on out there and you can just see what it means for the Andretti United team as they get wheeled back into their little base. Oh, my goodness. Look at the radiator on the front of that car. So there's a cooler there right on the front of the car, which... Uh, is absolutely clogged full of dirt. That's what happens when you use the cowling, the bodywork over the front. So although the aero on these cars isn't that critical. So look look how sideways Scheider was up in turn one. Managed to pull off around the outside, then is on the inside, but somehow has completely missed the flag. So Hansen, who's been 
boffed off to the back of the grid, has gone, well, where have you all gone? And it's, it's so easy to get pulled in. Of course, that's what's happened to the front three cars. Just follow the car, because you're yeah. racing the car in front of you. You're not really looking at waypoints at that point, because you're expecting the person out front to be looking at them. Yeah, and you can see how clean the, 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 the front end of the Hummer was, despite missing the bodywork. At this point, there are four cars still in it. I think the Veloce's gone already. So where did the Hummer pick up the puncture? Because it was on, it was before. So this is where he tries to go up the inside. Then he ends up side by side, if you remember. Well, did end up side by side with Shiner, who there. got in front. By that point, it's already, the puncture's gone. You can see the tyre flailing around in the back. Right, this is the contact on the way in. So now Johan was on the right. I thought Johan was on the other side and needed to get, so it may be Shider. I'd love to see who was in which switch bay so we, to see what order they needed to peel off to the side. I know we've got it somewhere, haven't we? Well, but their switch bay is their, also their grid position. So Scheider would have been starting... Uh, he would have been in grid position two and switch bay two, and Rosberg would have been in three. So he was, he was trying, trying to get across to, get to across. his switch bay. Yeah, he's trying to get across to his switch bay, which so is... Rosberg a bit naughty for blocking well, I think is they're in front. They're half a car length in front, so in theory, Scheider's got to back off and duck in behind, I guess. But, yeah, I mean, both drivers will argue either way, and I'm not going to I'm not gonna try and make a decision on that one. We've that never seen it before. That is a shame. I like to push yeah, you into those awkward yeah, and uncomfortable just, situations. You know what I mean, don't you? I mean, that's, yeah. that's going to be an awkward and uncomfortable one for the drivers and for the stewards, because what do you do when you're side by side? You almost have to make the entrance to the, to the switch zone so narrow that you can't do that. But, well, it was carnage for absolutely everyone except Timmy Hansen and Katie Munnings. And with Timmy Hansen just getting his cap on, uh, congratulations to you two. What an unbelievable race. Uh, Andrew Coley in commentary saying the craziest we've seen yet. They forget the crazy race. That was the crazy race. Katie, do you have any idea what was going on behind you? I mean, I, I, I can't watch Timmy when he drives, first of all. But yeah, he did an amazing <laughs> job, legend. But yeah, I mean, I was kind of eyes forward. And you, the thing is, that you have to remember it's qualifying. And that's so difficult to do when you're a competitive person. But yeah, I mean, Timmy did the overtake of a weekend, you know, from fifth to first in one corner. I think that's pretty epic. And for you, what was it like driving out in front, knowing, well, well, did you know that there were penalties behind you? And did you know just to make sure you got the car to the line? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously we've got comms with the engineer all the time. But that's almost harder. It's harder to bring it back and not push when, when you know, you know, it's easier to drive on the limit. Um, but definitely it makes it takes the pressure off. It's always nice to be out in front. So that's why I like it when he starts. He normally delivers that. And commentary were questioning whether you did slow in time for the slow zones. You think you very much did. I mean, I actually slowed too early because race control, I thought it's saying slow zone as I was in eight. So I slowed kind of on the exit and then my, my engineer said, no, it's the next one. So I'm sure I did. Well, thank you. Sorry, I have no time to, to speak to you. Sorry, Sorry. but well done. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, well done. Thumbs up. Cheers, Timmy. <laughs> Here's the result then of the first race of qualifying two, possibly the baddest race we've ever had in Extreme E. P5 at DNF for Veloce, P4 at DNF for XI Energy after contact in the switch zone. A minute and 57 back for Chip Ganassi Racing, P2 for RXR. Is anything else going to get investigated from that one? But out front, no issues and a win and a total turnaround. P1 for Genesis Andretti United. Well, oh, yeah, bonkers. Extraordinary, just extraordinary. Let's have a look at the highlights and take you back to the start. So here, watch Christoph's in middle of the grid. He felt he'd have good traction there, and he said the outside wasn't where you want to be. Now, where does the first corner go? It does go to the right. So yeah, so the the other slot that he said he thought was good was the one that Chip Ganassi Racing was in. Scheider goes all the way around the outside. You're on board there with RXR, who are in P4, but this is where it all goes wrong. He's up on the, uh, coming off. There goes the back hood. This is coming off the ridge line. Hansen pops up the inside of, of Chip Ganassi Racing, and, and everybody else has gone round the outside. Jenny, what were they thinking? We, we, we almost need to speak to, to Timo, because he was in the lead of those three cars, to see what happened, or are we going to see it from a different angle? Just I just mean, wonder if they were sunblinded slightly yeah, and just I, couldn't quite make the visibility out on that first flag and just saw the second one and thought that must be the, the turn in, so but he, actually it was the was, oversight. He could have been watching his mirrors. You know, you just don't know where Scheider was looking at that that one moment. This, so look, this is that's the flags up in front of us, isn't it? And they, they went down the outside of that. Look at the lines, you can see them. Yeah. How on earth? It, 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 the visibility is good. You're not, if it was P2 and there was dust, you'd get it. But he was the first car there. I can't quite figure that out. 
Well, I'm sure Laura will scuttle around and try and work scuttle. out exactly <laughs> what on, happened Laura. like a desert beetle with <laughs> exactly. more grace. That um, was, do you see Chip Ganassi race in the background? I think that was the point at which Kyle LeDuc realised, oh, I'm coming into the slow zone. He was all crossed up and in getting on the brakes and sideways, he lost positions. So that was a, that was a shame for them. Yeah, then the puncture. They are under investigation for a second slow zone over speeding as well. So things not looking too rosy for them, even though they finished in third. Wowzers. So there's the Veloce machine at the side of the track. To be honest with you, the Veloce machine was far enough off. Oh, look, broken steering just in a straight line. So that was the dust that we saw in the background. Um, I think we could have got away without the without the yellow zone. The car was far enough off for me, but I get it. They've got to err on the side of caution. Um, that's Tamara doing a good job of dragging the car out of the way. Meanwhile, Katie had had the radio call, but as she said, it's so difficult. The only reason we questioned whether she'd slowed down or not really was because that was the only way we could see that they might lose the race was if they got a penalty. But she said she slowed down early. And of course, at the time we were on uh, with RXR, we were on board. Yeah. Well, absolutely thrilling, isn't it? Not only the racing, but the reason why we're here as well. It's all about sustainability of mining as we go in the search of copper and the green revolution. And I tell you what, one man who knows all about it is our climate change scientist, Carlos Duarte. I must confess that I was never a fan of motorsports at all. In fact, I had a relatively negative perception because burning fuel and making a lot of noise for fun wasn't really something that I considered consistent with my own values and principles. So when I was approached by Extreme, I was a bit skeptic about the proposition. Then I learned more about Extreme. I learned that there was a commitment with spearheading the development of new solutions for sustainable mobility with an emphasis in communicating climate science and climate action to the public. And that public is a lot broader than the public that we usually get to talk to. I grew up in Spain in a relatively rough neighborhood. Then my very likely outcome will be to either get into drugs or some sort of breaking the law. But in the 70s, when I was a teenager, I got a scholarship to go to a boarding school. My program continued into being funded for university. So then I chose biology, but it was almost nearly a random choice. I was not really interested by what I was being presented with until I was uh, confronted with ecology. And at that time I was going away to Canada in the summers and working in farms and then wandering around national parks. And that was a discovery of the peace that nature brings to my soul. And therefore I was interested in contributing to that path of discovery and why we had this relationship, a spiritual relationship with nature and do that through science. After my 25 years of uh, research, I wasn't very optimistic on the future of the ocean or the planet altogether. But then I reflected that I did not go into science to become a notary of the demise of the oceans. Then I uh, was motivated to work on solutions and try to solve these problems and eventually developing the solutions into action. And one of the main outcomes of that path in search for solutions was the development of the concept of blue carbon and how healthy marine ecosystems can contribute to mitigate climate change. We need to work with the policymakers, we need to work with the private sector, we need to work with communities, and we need to work with communicators so that the scope for those solutions are shared and people are mobilized into deploying them in nature. I think that's one of the reasons why I enjoy working with Extreme, finding an entirely different way of communicating science that is embedded in action sports to sectors of society that we never get to communicate to. And if their heroes are committed, they will be committed too. It is precisely the role of science to push the boundaries of the possible every day. And the prerequisite is that we should not give up. Q2 Race 2 is coming up fast and furious and joining me is one of the protagonists of that race and it's Carlos Science of the Axiom Science team. A brilliant lap from Laia, fastest female um, from this morning. You had some issues on your lap though, talk me through it. Well in the, 
in the driver chains, we have a problem with the seat belt and uh, it was not clean. And in the last moment, uh, we lost some seconds. And then when, when I pressed the, the button to go, the mechanic was still inside the zone and we got the penalty. How will you look to bounce back from that? Because we now have door-to-door -door racing and it's out on this course, which is exceptionally fast. Yeah, we will see. I think it's, a, it's more like a rallycross uh, track and uh, we will see. It's the first time we have this type of, of, of track. Hopefully there is no, no dust. We can have a, a good competition. And you're in the battle as well for second place, but also, I guess, trying to stop RXR running away with it and winning the title here. What is the goal? What is the big aim for this well, weekend? You know, we need to, to think in ourselves. Our fight is for second, third and fourth, and hopefully we can, you know, there are very strong teams all, all, all the way now. Big uh, drivers, the, all, the, all the females are getting faster and faster, so I think it's, it's getting interesting. We need to try to do a good job. And Laia is currently the fastest yeah. as well. So we'll see. She's Thank you very much. Job. She's doing a very good job. She is indeed. Thank you. Good luck to you, Carlos. Well, there we go. As you said, Laia Sant's fastest this morning, uh, just in front of Michaela Arlen Kotolinski of RXR and Christina Gutierrez of X44 as well. But one driver who has jumped in the car after injury to uh, NASA's teammate Jutta yesterday is... Clara Anderson, we're going to speak to her now. This is going to be a whirlwind debut for her. Uh, where can I find her? She's somewhere in the back, all the way through here. We'll keep walking through um, and try and get through. Um, we're right in the garage. Sorry, guys, do excuse us. We're pushing our way here. I'm, <laughs> I'm coming to find Clara, who is relaxing um, down here. I'll jump down and join you. Hello, everyone. This uh, is Race Control a debut once for again. you this weekend. I remember uh, speaking to you at the start of the season the when you couldn't do Saudi Arabia because of COVID and you were absolutely gutted. Here you are relaxing <laughs> ahead of some door-to-door -door racing out there. You must be having the time of your life, I guess. Yes, no, I'm super excited. Uh, of course, it's, it's a big opportunity for me and uh, it's nerve wracking, but I'm also so excited and the team is so supporting with uh, Nasser helping me. And uh, now I had the two laps of warm up, so now we push for Q2. How much could you learn during those two laps? Oh, so, so much. We already have the pointers down and the analysis done. So now we just take it from there and take it step by step. I say now it's time for door-to-door -door racing, which may be daunting to some, but you are the first female ever to be on a podium in a World Rallycross event. This has been likened to a Rallycross track, and there's plenty of door-to-door -door action in that, isn't there? So you should be right at home. Yeah, no, I feel at home by that. It's always nice to have cars around as long as you're in front, so Nasser will do the, the first work, and then hopefully I will stay in front. What's the aim? What's the goal for you this weekend? Uh, just learning the, the car as much as I can uh, and developing my pace. But uh, I think it's also to just stay calm, um, take it step by step and uh, having some fun with it also. I love it. Thank you so much and best of luck. It's brilliant to see you here. And we do wish, of course, Jutta all the very best. But we have Q2 Race 2 coming up very soon. I'd better get out of here. Here we go then, Q2 race two. Is it gonna be quite as carnage as the first one was? I'd like to think can not, it? but can you just never know. No, I don't <laughs> think it can personally. I don't think it can. So extraordinary was that race. So it's JBXE, McLaren, X44, Apt Cupra, and Axiona Science. Those are your five cars lined up from left to right. Attention all teams, this is Race Control. Stand by for the start of the Copper x -Prix. Qualifying round two, heat two, is about to begin. Energize your systems and prepare to race. Crash helmets on then. Four female drivers heading out for the second part of the run, but Kevin Hansen also with JBXE being the only team to field their female driver for the start of Q2. Thumbs up from Emma Gilmore, Tanner Faust teammate. Faust out on the line, good to go. The marshals will be clear from there in a moment. Here's another look at that grid. Middle is Sebastian Loeb for X44. That's the same slot that RXR chose, but it didn't work out for them, did it? Not at all. You can just see JBX seat doors still open down there at the moment. I'm just wondering how much they would have learned from watching that first race go off because 
It's the first race that we've seen this weekend. So much, I think, you can three, look at and go, three, huh, one, okay. Three minutes signal, three minutes signal. Three minutes, we're hearing to the race start, so it's going to be a long old build-up for these drivers. That's maybe why the doors are open, unless has JPXC got a problem, because there are a number of people down around that vehicle. So have they got an issue on the start line, um, which Hedda Hozas has, has signaled to the marshals down there? There's Carlos Sainz. Everybody else looks pretty relaxed and ready to go. You can see the mechanic just leaning into the car of Hossas and the JBXC team. Of course, that car had problems earlier on today. He's got a little battery charger pack in his hand. Oh, look, the Veloce car just getting back on a that's, tractor. That's not ideal, is it? That is not glorious. Right, doors down, that's a good sign. Yeah, now the grid is, uh, is clear of technicians what have um what have you learned andrew from that first first race start uh i'm not convinced the middle grid slots the uh the ideal one i mean <laughs> to turn one to a bit carnage um yeah before it started christopherson was saying he thought that slot two was a little bit bumpy that maybe that wasn't the way to go but he didn't want to be on the outside turns mm. out the person who was right on the outside ended up getting into the lead there is your inside to outside from from left to right as we view it so middle of the grid, uh, X44. Oof. Yeah. It's an, an, as well, the, the start straight, Jenny, was longer than I thought. And I know that sounds mad, but with the, you know, I thought it looked like a shorter straight than normal. I, we didn't really even see, did we, who used hyperdrive when in the last no. one? Because there was <laughs> so much going on. I was fixated by RXR losing time. Yeah. It, yeah, that they was really who I got had my eye down. on. Yeah, it was like, where, where are they going? And they were going backwards. Hmm. Well, Sebastian Loeb looks very chilled at the moment in the X44 Vida Carbon car. He'll be alongside Tanner Faust, Nasser Alatia, and then on the outside, One minute. Carlos One Sainz, minute signal. Kevin Hansen. But it's not Kevin Hansen. That's not right. It's, it's Hedda Hossas. Hossas. on yeah, our the, timing yeah, the screens. Own. I apologise. It says Kevin Hansen. We know it's not Kevin. Yeah, so she's the only female driver starting in this. She has raced before in, in other categories as well, and she got her elbows right out in Sardinia. There she is. Doesn't look remotely phased. Yeah, thumbs up. I'll get stuck in. Come on, lads. Yeah, really interesting tactic for them to switch it up. Of course, you rotate with every different round. So going forward tomorrow, it'll switch again and then switch again for the final to be the same drivers taking the line. Race two coming up. Five into one didn't go last time. Will it go this time? Ten seconds to the green light. Who's going to get up to turn one first? Will that middle grid slot work out for Sebastian Loeb? He's got Tanner Faust to his left. He's on the handbrake, loading everything up, getting ready to launch the car. Green light. Great start in the middle of the grid for him. X44 getting away much better. Tanner Faust on his left, though, for McLaren. Also doing a tidy job in the background. Ad Cooper have gone backwards. Alatia has lost ground. Carlos Sainz up alongside. Sebastian Loeb's going to get mugged in turn one here. Going to run a little bit deep. Dirt up over the front of Hedda Hozas's car. She's on the outside. It's Carlos Sainz who gets it. Alatia goes high. Sebastian Loeb in P2 down low. They'll try and shut the door on the inside line. But it is Carlos Sainz leading from Sebastian Loeb. Slightly less carnage than last time, which is good, but look at Loeb just trying to bear down on Sainz. Hossas slightly further back uh, and just catching that McLaren now, but the top three starting to try and break away as they go over the ridge section. So Alatia doing a great job in third, launching the car off the crest there in the background. Tanner Faust has dropped back just a little bit. Now alongside Sebastian Loeb trying to put a nose up the inside of Carlos Sainz. They come up towards that left-handed crest now. Turning in, Sainz in the lead, still just about, but Sebastian Loeb's right there. Bumpy right for Sainz. Did he run a little bit wider than he wanted to? Alatia as well is close in behind Sebastian Loeb. Question is, this is a traction challenge. Is being in this three-car tunnel going to make them go faster and push them on or actually get in the way of setting the fastest lap time possible? So you can see Sainz going on the outside of that. Loeb trying to find a way past him, and then Alatia searching as well. This is going to be interesting with the tactics they use as they go down this slalom course. I reckon there might be a problem for McLaren. Tanner Faust is, is out the back of the pack and wouldn't it's just wouldn't expect him to be there. So Loeb goes on the outside of the jump. Carlos Sainz on the inside. Alatia smack in the middle down now. Look at Loeb, lined him up. So Sebastian Loeb's teed up. Carlos Sainz for a pass down the front straight. There's just a quick left-hander. The nose of the X44 is right up the inside of Jonas Sainz. Contact between them as they come up to the last gate before the start finish. Oh. Hey, down to the gate. Loeb's taken the gate down, takes the lead, but he'll get a penalty for that. As three cars fly over the crest within half a second. 
second of each other. So Loeb takes the lead of this, then it's Sainz, and then it's the apt Cooper car of Alatia. Alatia trying to claw back space. That penalty may be five seconds for a down flag, but it looks like it's getting very physical between these two drivers once again. It's whether or not they think there's an advantage, isn't it, Jenny, as well? You know, was there an a Would he have made that pass if he hadn't taken the flag down? If they think there's more of an advantage for it, then he might get a penalty. Alatia now looking to get past Carlos Sainz. Remember, uh, there's been a bit of friction between those two in the past. Oh, on the screen, absolutely filthy from Alatia. Wipe is not working very well as Carlos Sainz gets sideways in front of him. Faust for McLaren is a little way back as well as Hozas. Wow. So were there problems for them or not? But this race couldn't be tighter between these three absolute legends. I hope someone's got a bucket of seawater to throw over that App Cooper screen. There's absolutely nothing that he can see through that. He's really just going on his gut instinct. But out in front, it's the X44 Vieben Cup Vida Carbon Racing Car of Loeb. Just look at the speeds they're getting up to. You've got to know when to push and when to just release a little bit. On board with Nasser Alatia. Dropped a little bit, and there's just tiny gaps in between them. Now would be the opportunity if you think you... Ah, OK. 10-second penalty for X44. So uh, as Sebastian Loeb dropping waypoint 20, the last flag before the start finish as he made that pass on Carlos Sainz. So now, Jenny, they've got to get in. They know that they have the advantage of knowing what the penalty is now. They've got to gap the rest of them by 10 seconds if they want to hold on to the win. This will be fascinating to see because we've seen Axiona Sainz having issues with their switch zone already. This is going to be a high-pressure switch. They know there's a lot on the line here, so they're going to want to come in fast as well and hand over. And look at Sainz. He looks like he's been he was, through it. He was wild in the background of that last shot. We saw Loeb coming down. Everything was tidy in the background. Uh, Sainz was practically on the lock stops. It couldn't be closer as they come into the switch zone. But look how much room he managed to close up when it came to stopping. He got on those brakes yeah. and really closed the gap between him and Loeb. Did a fantastic job. It's nice, isn't it, when you've got someone in front of you to judge it by, assuming, of course, they haven't done what Timo Scheider did in the first race and, and got it wrong. So into the switch zone now. Car stops, out comes Christina Gutierrez, runs around to the left-hand side of the car, Loeb will climb out, up goes the goal wing door. Into neutral, Lyre Sands now ready, they've absolutely got to nail this, Jenny, you said it, they've got to get this right, no nerves from what happened last time, Carlos does a good job there, he released the chest straps, you can see, so they're nice and long, that makes getting into the car a little bit easier. Now, they're in Bay 5, which is the final base, so the shortest distance between them and getting back out and into the racing zone, they have to hold 30 kilometres an hour is all they're allowed to do, but look, they're helping each other out, first out of the blocks should be X44, Christina Gutierrez takes the wheel, Lyre Sands there, you can just see Carlos closing the door. So look, they're back in slot number three here. You're on board with Gutierrez, it's full chill. She releases the car. Now Lyre Sands has to wait. Remember, she would have been waiting a little bit longer to get to the front. She should go any time now. And there she is. So the gap is absolutely, it's tiny. It's a car length between them. And just a couple of car lengths further back is Clara Anderson, who might have to get stuck into an incredible battle on a debut in Extreme E. Fascinating. Just look hyperdrive for the Apt Cooper XC team as well. They're using that on the line for Anderson and for Sands as well. Let's go down to Laura. Well, Sebastian Loeb first in, but you've just been told there's a 10 second penalty for hitting that flag. Your reaction to that? Because it was a great overtake, but you just clipped it. It's 10 when you touch. It is, it is a 10 second penalty. And if you cut, it's, it's five. There's the, the ruling is it's a 10 second penalty for that, that waypoint yeah, flag. I didn't notice. I was with science and I saw I, that I was very close from a, a, a flag, but I didn't notice that I, I touched it really. So that's it. It was a good battle between you and Carlos. <laughs> it was a, a tough battle. I was blocked behind. Uh, he was doing a lot of mistakes. Uh, I was faster, so I had to try and uh, finally I could pass him, but uh, OK. We'll see what Christina can do. Thanks, Seb. Sebastian there is referring to the fact, of course, that it can be a five-second penalty, but, Jenny, it's down to the stewards to decide if they feel there's an advantage, and obviously he made the pass also with a touch on the flag. I do feel a bit for him. I can understand. Yeah, I didn't notice. Of course he didn't. He was in the door of Carlos Sainz as we see Laia Sands heading up the inside of Gutierrez. Over the crest now they are side by side. Gutierrez flies it hard, but Laia Sands is going to be there as she tries to shut the door. The Sainz team nearly took a flag down. Now she can make the cutback as Gutierrez runs a little bit wide. Laia Sands trying to put, but she's still got a hyperdrive left. Boot 
boosts it away over the crest and gets a she get out of jail free car big time there. Wow, well, just look at the difference in speed that she managed to get there. Laya Sands is trying everything to try and get around Gutierrez, and I thought she almost had it. Gutierrez absolutely ragged coming down that hill. It looked like she wasn't in control of the X44 vehicle at all, but she managed to get it back on track in time to use that Inoa hyperdrive. She did just that, but look at the gap now. It's almost nothing. She had a massive sideways moment coming onto the straight, Jenny. That loses you a lot of momentum, and Laya Sands has got her in her sights big time. Clara Anderson is about eight seconds back, so she's lost a bit of time. That's to be expected. She hasn't driven this car much. There she is now, Nasser Alatia's teammate, doing a great job. How far back are the others? So, so yeah, so Gilmore and Kevin Hansen are 14 and 15 seconds back. They're only a second apart somewhere in the background. There's Gilmore. You can see her coming over the crest and, and the dirt flying up. I think this, that yeah, at, Cooper, at Cooper have said to them, get a hurry on, as well as McLaren, because they know that there's a penalty for the 44 car, so they think they can get into this. And just look at JBXC, Kevin Hansen. He wants a piece of this action as well. They're all trying to claw back time, 15 seconds back. So if Kevin can get a course within, he's got to get past Emma Gilmore first, gets the car sideways. Gilmore's going to try and keep the door shut and at least make Kevin go the long way round. Interesting what Loeb said about science. I felt he was making mistakes. I had to try and he did. We saw him tear up from a long way back. Over the crest now, Gilmore keeps it in tight on the inside. No room there for Kevin Hansen. That gap is staying at 15, but at the minute, Clara Anderson is just nine seconds back from X44. So can App Cupra pinch that P2 spot here? Both of those cars that you're seeing on screen now, using their hyperdrive at the same time. So uh, Gilmore versus uh, Hansen, Hansen at the yeah. moment. The screen graphics not quite correct and keeping up to date with us. But the X44 car out in front. And it is Sands trying to close the gap up to Gutierrez. Sands has run a little bit wide there. That's given Gutierrez just a little bit of breathing space, Jenny. Yeah, they're just coming out of the Continental hyperdrive. Who is going to take this? Just look at the back of Waypoint flag down. Was that McLaren taking them down? Quite possibly out in front. We're just looking uh, at the X44 coming down. This is the battle for fourth and fifth, which is pretty intense, but out in front, it's still a one and a half second gap for Sainz. She's trying to get through, but can't do it, and it's the X44 car that brings it home with Sands just coming in in second place. What a fight between those two cars. Brilliant. So they've already updated the timing screen. It's Laya Sands and Carlos Sainz who take the win thanks to that 10 second penalty for Gutierrez and Loeb in the X44 car. I'm looking at the gap, and no, so it looks like you, surely Anderson and, and Nasser Alatia should go up another spot looking at the gap. What was it, 10 seconds, and they're showing 11.4. Well, we'll get you an update on that in a minute. 58 is under investigation. That is indeed Emma Gilmore for Neil McLaren, who had Kevin Hansen right behind her. What a race. Fabulous stuff. X44 with that penalty, which just slips them back in the standings. We'll wait for an official um, timing shot to see exactly who goes through. So look at the gaps on screen. We've got a different timing screen than you guys have at home. And you can see it's 10.03 was the gap between X44. So have they held on to that by three hundredths oh. of a second? I think they have. Wow. Because it, oh, it's saying, why is it saying plus 8.5? That'd be because they've been given the penalty. Nine minutes three for Acciona Sainz will be the winning time. Yeah, I, I, I think I think they've held on to it by, by three hundredths of a second, but we'll find out. So Laura is down with Carlos Sainz, and it's Sainz and Sands who take the win for Acciona Sainz. What a brilliant pair of races. Well, Carlos, we'll walk you back toward the garage. Hopefully you'll see uh, your teammate, Laia, who's just brought it home with that penalty for X44. Talk me through that overtake from Sebastian Loeb, where he obviously hit down the flag. How did you see it? Well, no, for me, it was a good start. And then from there, I try to keep the position. I have a few touch with Sebastian, then he finally passed me. I think he, he told me that he, he touched a flag. And so that's a P1, which is very well welcome after the problems of this morning. Yeah, absolutely. Talk me through the start as well, a brilliant start from you. How much do you think grip position is going to play a part on that start line? How much? Grip position in terms of playing a part in the race, obviously launching down into Turn 1 with such a long run in? Well, I think, uh, I think we have a, a good lunch. And then from there, I try to, to keep a good line for the first corner, and that's it. That's it, that's how it goes. Uh, I mean, a brilliant result for you guys, looking ahead, of course, to tomorrow. Semi-finals now beckon. What was it like racing five cars on this course? You know, I'm not so much used to, to rally cross. 
uh, <laughs> this is really tight and but I must say it's it's good fun but uh, not easy. <laughs> Maybe we'll see you in Rallycross in the future, Carlos. I think we'd like to see that. I'll let you go to Laia. <laughs> Never say no. <laughs> oh, there you go. There's a line for you. Thank you. Well done, Carlos. Did, uh, did Carlos Sainz just agree there to do Rallycross in future? I think so. Right, fifth place, it was JBXE. Then in fourth, with that penalty, it's the McLaren team. Then it is, of course, App Cooper in third place, just missing out so close. X44 in second place with their penalty. And in first, it is the Axiona Science XE team with Science and Sands pipping everybody. Brilliant showing. Right, the command centre is there. It's been painful for some of the teams, but I tell you what, we're going to go down and have a quick chat with McLaren's Tanner Faust. Tanner, can you hear me? Hello. I can hear you. Can you hear hey, me? Yes, we can hear you. How are you doing? It's tough out there. The racing's spectacular. I heard the word painful. Yes, this is... <laughs> it, it honestly... My name is Helen uh, In this case, uh, I, I, uh, we, we seem tried to have a, a bit of a new oh. traction. Then. Go, go, Tanner. It's okay. We're good. Uh, we tried a new well, setting. With, uh, motocross. I come from a non motocross family. So it started there with some friends there and uh, just no bikes. And then when I was uh, 16 years old, my father showed me something called uh, folk race. So I was with cars when I was 16. And it started like a hobby at first. Uh, had work in school and everything and then it started to get more because I want to do rallycross so I started with rallycross when I was uh, 20 years old started with in Norway and then I got this opportunity in Denmark with um, a team called Lindemann Promotion and when I raced for Lindemann Promotion this team manager from Veloce Racing was looking for an up-and-coming young woman in Extreme E and then he saw me and was like, okay, who is her? And yeah. Um, and I was asked to do a test for Extreme Car, and I was like, yes. Uh, after the test, uh, yeah, the team manager and then came to me and said, you're good. And uh, that's where I started. I got the contract with uh, Veloce. So, Veloce Racing got this opportunity when um, GMXC didn't have a female driver. I was like, I'm almost sick for a few days. Like, this is really happening, you know? And then, um, yeah, in Sardinia, I got. Uh, team with Kevin I really felt the, the pressure and like really stressful to be there as well because it was my first time and it helped me a lot and I was really happy with uh, the performance I had I was happy with fourth in my first race and then suddenly we got this news that we are third and I was, I was so happy I grew up watching Jutta doing that car and same as NASA and yeah it's amazing now to be racing against them and to be a part of the same series as them uh, what's uh, fantastic with Extreme E is that you can go to these incredible places all around the world and you learn about all this climate changing and you see things in a different way. And my generation is the one that's going to experience all this climate change and it's so great to be a part of this championship and be so aware of it and learn so much about it. In the future I just want to always enjoy it and like not forget why I want to do motorsport and yeah, why it's so important to me and why I love it. Well, so much talent amongst our drivers, and it's lovely to hear a little bit more about who they are and what brought them to this wonderful world of motorsports. And I tell you what. Two... Yeah, absolutely brilliant. The first one was 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 fabulous for maybe being a, a bit too much carnage. The second <laughs> one was fab was just great racing, Jenny. It's a shame, actually, that Loeb downed the flag because it was so tight between them. And likewise for Gilmore. Yeah, Gilmore was watching for Hansen in her mirrors. Uh, Loeb was basically literally in the door of Carlos Sainz. Contact and one of the fastest parts of the circuit. Fair contact. Carlos quite liked it. Yeah, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not used to rally cross, he said, but he seems to be agreeing to do it in future, which is great for everyone because he's a legend. Um, yeah, it was, it was wild. That was a wild old ride for two qualifying races. We'd expect that at the knockout stages where you must go through. Or a crazy race well, where it's not, do or die. Not in qualifying. You know, I mean, I've, 
Yeah, they've all um, taken the brain out and just gone full send. Well, I think this is because this is a championship deciding weekend. Everyone knows what's at stake. Just to remind you, in case you've joined us, RXR lead the standings at the moment. 75 points is their total, which means they're leading the championship by 32. It's a huge amount. Up and down the paddock, people are going to be going, what can we do? Chip Ganassi Racing, Andrew Coley, 43 points they have. So they're 32 points behind. Then one behind them is Science, one behind them X44. It's a great challenge. Well, Clara Anderson joins me right now. And of course, Clara, that was your debut five car race in Extreme E. Not your debut five car race, of course, in any motorsport, because we know you're a rallycross legend now who's still on the podium. But tell me how that was and how much you enjoyed getting stuck in. Oh, it was so intense. It was so much fun, but also so difficult. It was my first time yeah, racing with cars. Um, so yeah, it, it was a challenge, um, but my time keeps improving. So that's the main thing. So now we analyze for tomorrow. Absolutely. Well, and we are sort of awaiting the final classification at the moment as well. We're, you're not sure either. So we're seeing where you're going to end up, of course, heading into those semi-finals. We wait and see what the news will bring. But obviously you were so close to getting P2 as well with that penalty for X44. Was that playing into your mind? Uh, no, a little bit, yeah. Uh, but also I knew that JB would come from behind, so it was also playing the defence for the position. But uh, yeah, of course, just taking no big risks and just getting the car to the finish line, that's my number one goal. I love that. Fighting on both fronts in your first race. Well done to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, Clara seeming pretty happy. And, you know, it's a big ask, Jenny. You come here and, and jump into a completely different kind of car. We know she's been racing rallycross. She's been racing rallycross non-stop for the last few years. But uh, this is a, a bigger, heavier vehicle. It's a different kind of terrain. This is actually, this track has kind of played into her hands, at least from the point of view that's a little bit more rallycross style in terms of a lot of corners and a lot of opportunities to pass. A lot of physicality. Yeah, <laughs> but but it's, it is a big ask. And, and she she did do the rookie test, as we said earlier on today, with Acciona Science last year. I think they had her on the middle sector in Sardinia and, and just, you know, saying, right, get us some consistency. They wanted to see what she could do. Uh, that raised the eyebrows of Extreme E, and they were like, okay, you know what? when we need a championship driver, Clara's on the list, and, and that actually came sooner than she thought when Tamara Molinaro, of course, got the got the upgrade, if you like, to a driver at Excite. So that's, you've got to be there to take those career opportunities when they come, and, and she's grasped this with both hands. I think she's doing a great job. What I also find fascinating is this crossover of information between the different drivers. You know, we saw with Laura going around, she wanted to have a little snoop into what was happening on the screen. They closed her down straight away at Excite Energy. And there is very much this partnership building between the different teams and yes some of them are newer to it than others but the information that can be shared the knowledge is fantastic yeah absolutely and it, it, that that teammate and how you work with that teammate look at what johan's done with his teammates it, it's been uh, a, a brilliant effort with both molly taylor and with michaela arlen kotlinski of just sharing that info you could see timo doing the same with thing with tamara tamara is a rally driver so she's got no problem with driving the car flat on the loose but she said when we spoke to her in commentary earlier and when she said i don't know what's gonna happen in the race don't ask me that where timo will have a much better idea of that and it's kind of a case of preparing them did you lose the start yes okay fine drop back cut back in the inside of turn one yeah what can he pass on to her and what should he, she pass on to him it is a team effort at, at all times well, shots of the paddock, and you can just see those dust devils whipping around with the sand coming up and the, the flags blowing around as well. There's so much excitement down in that paddock. The first time that Extreme E has made it to South America. We've tried in the past, but unfortunately not managed it. We have finally managed it in season two. Um, what a delight it is and what extraordinary racing it's showing us. I'm telling you what, a lot of work for some of these teams to do between now and tomorrow. There was a lot of work to do between Sardinia and here, wasn't there? That's the thing is when the cars are on the boat, they don't have quite so much time to work on them and, and you know several of the teams had to ask for special permission to work longer on the cars after the action we saw double header in sardinia then a long journey via ship to south america it is good to be here isn't it you know, last year covid did spoil the plans everybody knew for a whole year we were going to come down to south america and then we couldn't do it so i'm, I'm glad we've made it yeah punta del este is the final stop on this journey the question is will the championship still be going or will these guys Axiona Science be able to take away points from Rosberg, enough points to mean that this championship goes on and continues down to the wire. Fascinating stuff. Right, Laura is down in the paddock. Let's find out who she's managing to catch up with.
Well, she crossed the line first, but it is P2 with the 10 second penalty. But an epic battle, Christina Gutierrez with Laia Sanz. Talk me through it. Yeah, it was nice to battle with uh, my friend Laia. Uh, she's too fast in this track, so I tried to close all the doors possible. But finish, we finish uh, second position because Seb uh, dropped one flag. So it doesn't matter because we finish second. We, we start in semi final two tomorrow. It will be challenging semi final one and two, so that's it. Don't care. There you go. And five door, five car racing, wheel to wheel action on this course for the first time. How was it and what did you learn looking into the semi finals tomorrow? Yes, it's a, it's a drag very challenging for overtake, for close the doors. You have a lot of lines to, to make, so you have different options. So the important thing is to have the correct piece, but not uh, relax a little bit, because if not, someone can overtake you or, or you can overtake. So it will be interesting tomorrow. And I saw you just before you headed into the command centre and then the start, of course, of your race. I said, good luck, and you said thank you. But I thought to myself, I wonder how you're feeling having seen the chaos of race one, the bodywork strewn all over this course. What goes through your mind as a driver, knowing you're about to go into the heat of battle as well? Oh, my God, it was crazy watching television. Sometimes it's <laughs> worse to see in television because you are so nervous also. Uh, when I saw, I said, OK, I need to be calm because if not, we are destroying all the cars and if... Nobody passed off the semi-final, so the important thing is to be on the on the piece, on the track, and finish. To stay calm, but you then had Leia Sanz all over the back of you as well. Between her, Michaela, and yourself, Katie Munnings too up there. The female drivers are really beginning to improve and progress and evolve, aren't they? Yes, it's incredible to see the performance of the girls. Also, we are on times, sometimes on the in the same time, some boy of the boys. So it's it's really nice to see, and it's very grateful to see all the girls improving all the races, and the level is incredible. Yeah, and it's so tight here. The times between you all. Thank you very much, Christina. Good luck tomorrow. So this was the start. X44 got a much better start from that middle grid slot than RXR did. But I was, I was amazed, Sainz came back massively. Look at where Sainz is now, he's P4, close to P5, and then suddenly just seems to, look, look at the, the change in pace between him and Apkupra. He's far left of your screen now. Look, look how far back he is, Jenny, and then just, just suddenly comes on. Now, unless he used hyperdrive there and we didn't clock it according to our graphics, got in front of Apkupra. Now you've still got four cars wide at this point. And he's pushing across, on, and he's in front. He's in, he's in front of Sebastian Loeb at that point. Yeah, JBXC as well on the outside managed to find a bit of traction. So I just wonder if at, at one point maybe they just managed to dig in a little bit more and they get a bit more grip and then they can catapult themselves almost up the track. It's Look bizarre, isn't it? You know, it, in the good old days, you just said, oh, Mr. Gearshift. But, you know, not with these cars. It's, you know, just, it's uh, one continuous RPM for this particular spec of vehicle. Um, there are electric cars with with gears, but these are a single. Look at look at look at Sainz backing it into the first corner to take that whole shot. Loeb at this point looks so Alatia's up the inside of Loeb. Tanner Faust has gone up really tight on the exit of turn one. I think was looking for a cut back into turn two. Beneath him is ahead of Hosas. So does Hosas then? We don't see what happens. I reckon Hosas comes up. And fair go, she's got the inside line. Does she then block low? Oh, no, uh, sorry, Tap fouls off. She doesn't. He does get P4. They're in a line. We thought it was pretty sensible, didn't we? Yeah, thought. Um, this is the moment that we saw the X44 car trying to get past the Axiona Science car. And this is a wide track, relatively speaking, but still really difficult to pass. Really difficult to try and find a space and a way through. Yeah, Loeb felt he was faster. He said Science was making mistakes. There's, there's a little bit there of Science potentially just blocking Jenny but now look at Loeb Loeb's gone for the wide line here he knows Sainz look he stays wide now he starts to turn in and he knows Sainz is going to run wide so he's teed him up the whole way down the hill now he's on the on the uh, on the throttle and, and he's going to get alongside but as we see the rear shot as they go over he just down to the flag let's have a look and see what the margin was I think it was pretty tight so they draw alongside each other. A little bit of contact there as well as they go round. This is the flag, waypoint 20 that goes down. So by that point... Oh, it's tiny. He's through, but he just clips it's it. It's the knobble of the side of a Continental tyre. It's literally, you know, those big, chunky grips on the side. Literally, he's knocked it down by the tiniest margin. You saw him point the steering out, didn't you, on the way into the corner, just desperately trying to correct his line and not quite there. 
So these are your qualifying two results, and you can see there Hansen and Munnings turn things around from ninth, collecting two points to ten points, and Sainz and Sands getting ten points as well. What does that mean for tomorrow? Well, oh, look at that, semi-final one, semi-final two. RXR do go through into that semi-final one. That down flag cost Logan Gutierrez the top qualifier spot. They would have won the race and they'd have been a point ahead. I think they would have been top qualifiers ahead of RXR. There's no points for this, so it doesn't matter. But yet, four in that crazy race, only one's going to go through. After the racing we've seen today, tomorrow's going to be wild. Yeah, it certainly is. Make sure you come back and join us as we get the semi-finals, the crazy race and the final underway and see if RXR can become two times champions in Extreme E. Thanks for your time. See you tomorrow.